everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be solving the leak code question 306 additive number. Alright, so this is a very fun question to solve. So let's just go over what the question is and then I'll explain to you how I got the final solution. Cool. So an additive number is a string whose digits can form an additive sequence. A valid additive sequence should contain at least three numbers, except for the first two numbers. Each subsequent number in the, sub, uh, in the sequence must be the sum of the preceding two, okay? Uh, so given a string containing only digits return true if, there is an if it is an additive number or else false. Uh, so note numbers in the additive sequence cannot have leading zeros. So for example, 1, 2, 0, 3 or 1, 0, 2, 3 are not valid, right? So this is something we do need to check for while we are looking at our solution. So very quickly over here, we have this input and this does form a additive sequence with these numbers. So what that means is when you look at the two numbers, except for the first two, the third number is the sum of the previous two. Okay, so we have one and one. So one plus one should equal the next number, which is two. Okay, so now we have one and two. So one and two should equal to the next number three, which it does. Then we have two and three, which should equal to five and three and five should equal to eight. In this case, it does, so it is an additive number. So this is where it gets slightly complicated, okay? Which is the fact that look at this input over here. And what happens over here is that uh, the first number is 1, and the second number is not 9. Instead, the second number is 99, okay? And when you do that, you get 1 plus 99 is equal to 100, okay? So you cannot just look at the case where 1 plus 9 is equal to 10. If you did that, that would give you the wrong answer. So this is where we kind of lead up to our solution, okay? So I'll just go over this input over here. Okay, so that is one, one, two, three, five, eight. So the only hard part of this question is understanding that you don't know what the first and the second number are, okay? So let's just say the first number is the number one, and the second number is the number 123 because that is a possibility. So we don't know what the second number is, right? So say the first number was 1. The second number can be 1. It could be 12. It could be 123. It could be 1, 2, 3, 5. Or it could be 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. Oh, sorry. 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. So these are all possibilities that we could have. And now it gets even more complicated because the first number can be something else as well. The first number could be 11, right? So if the first number was 11, then we have a different set of numbers that would be valid second numbers. So the only hard part is figuring out what the first and the second numbers are. So let's just make it easy for now. And let's say we, we know this beforehand. So let's say the first number is going to be 1. And the second number is going to be the other number, uh, the next number, which is also 1. So now, now that we know this, we can just clearly do an iterative process, right? And the way we're going to do that is simple, right? So we first have the first and second number, and we look at what the result is. So in this case, the result is 2. So now we have all these as our remaining numbers. And what we do is we check if the, if the result is in the beginning. So the, is the result the, uh, the first number? So is 2 in the beginning? It is. So this means that so far it is an additive sequence. So now we need to go on to the next step. So what happens is the second number now becomes the new first number. Okay? So that becomes 1. So essentially this is now our first number. And now what becomes the second number? Well the second number is now the result. So the result becomes the second number. In other words, this is our second number, okay? And let me just get rid of what's up top. So now all the remaining numbers are the numbers 3, 5, and 8, okay? So we do the same thing. So first plus second is the number 3, okay? And let's just look. Uh, so in the remaining numbers, the first number is 3, and that's it. So now we're done, right? So uh, we do the same thing. We iterate it on. So the first number becomes 2, then 3 and then so on and so forth, right? So this we do until we reach the ending. And if we successfully reach the ending, that means that we have an additive number and we return true. But now what I did here was the assumption 
that I know what the first and the second number is. So instead, we don't actually know that. So what we actually do is we try all possible first numbers and all possible second numbers, okay? So let's just look at an example. So let's say the first number is one. The second number could also be 12, right? So in that case, let's try it out, right? So one, and I have 12, and the sum is 13. So from the remaining numbers, does it start with 13? It does not. So this is not a valid combination. So since this does not return a additive sequence, we try the next possibility, okay? And uh, let's just look at one. So for example, we have, let's just say we have one, and we have one, two, three. So we have one over here and one, two, three. So a very basic thing we can do is the remaining numbers are 58. And the number of remaining numbers are two. So we have two digits here. We have three digits here and one digit here. So the sum of these two is going to be a minimum of three digits or more. So automatically, this is not going to be an additive sequence. And the reason for that is because this is three digits, right? And the sum is also going to be at least three digits, but the remaining numbers are just two. So this is not going to be a valid solution. So essentially using these, we just cross out everything that is not a valid solution. So the first numbers are going to be everything starting from the zeroth index all the way to the ending. So we could have one, we could have one, one, we could have one, one, two, one, one, three, and so on. Now the second index is going to be anything after the first number, okay? So if the first number was one, one, two, three, the second number can be five, or it could be five, eight, right? That's how we're gonna do it. Now, we also have a lot of other conditions. So for example, a number like zero, one would not be considered. Now, Python would, if you do int zero, one, this is gonna give us a value of one. So we need to make sure for these conditions. And we also have a few other conditions where let's say the sum do not equal to each other. So we just need to look out for all these conditions. So this is a basic idea, and I think it'll make a lot more sense when you look at the code. So yeah, let me just show you what that looks like. All right, so the code is going to be a bit long, but I feel like by writing it a bit longer, it should be a lot easier to understand. So now one of the conditions in the question was that we need to have a minimum of three numbers for it to be an additive sequence. So directly what we could do is we could check if the length of nums is less than three, and if that's the case, we cannot have a additive number. So we return false. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna generate all the possible first and second numbers, okay? So the first number is gonna start off at a index of zero. That is always going to be fixed. So now let, we gotta see where the second number is gonna start off at. So for that, we're gonna use a for loop and we're gonna try out every possibility. So this is gonna start off at the first index or index plus one and this is gonna go all the way till the ending. So that is nothing else but the length of num, okay? So now this gives us, so now we have the first number and we also have the starting of the second number, but we also need to get the ending of the third number. So the ending of the third number is the same as the starting of the remaining numbers, okay? So for that, we're gonna use a index three, okay? So for index three in range, so this is gonna start off at index two plus one, and this is gonna go all the way to the ending as well, okay? So very quickly, let's say we have the numbers one, two, three, four. Um, so now if the first number is just the number one, okay? So the first number is one. The second number would, let's say it's two, and everything else is gonna be the remaining, okay? So essentially everything from index one to index two is the first number. Everything from index two to index three is the second number, in this case two, and everything after index three are the remaining numbers. Cool, so now that we have that, we will just basically, I'll just write it down, okay? So the first number is gonna be num, and it starts at index one. So the first number is always gonna start at zero, and it's gonna go all the way up to index two. So now we have our second number, and in this case, we start at index two, and we go up to index three. And finally, we need to keep track of everything that's remaining. So remaining is gonna be everything from index three all the way to the ending. So now what exactly do we do with all this information? So essentially, now that we have the first and the second number, we need to see if using these two, we're able to have a additive sequence or not. 
So we're going to have a function. So we need to define it. Let's just call it helper. And to this, we're going to give it the first number, the second number, and everything remaining. So let's just say remaining. And we're going to have this return true or false. So if it's true, that means it is an additive number. And at that point, we return true. Now, if it is not of a additive number, we go on to the next possibility. So this is going to give us every single possible first and second number. So let's say even after trying everything, we don't return true. That means that, well, we do not have a additive number. Okay, cool. So this is the basic uh, running code, but now we need to under we need to define our function helper. Okay, so let's have helper over here. And what are the arguments? So we have first number, the second number, and the remaining. Cool. Okay, so now that we have this, let's do a few basic checks. Okay, so let's say the first number is one. The second number is, let's say, some really huge number. And the remaining is just the number 10, right? So no matter what, right, since the first and second number, the number of digits in the sum is going to be way bigger than how many of we have in remaining. So we can actually just, this is not going to give us a additive sequence. We can directly say false. So this is one condition we can have, okay? So let's just write that down. So if the length of the remaining value, okay, I'll just copy it and paste it for, so it's just faster. Okay, cool. So if the length of the remaining value is less than the length of the first number, then in that case, that is going to return false. But now we also need to check for the second number. So or what we can do is we can have a or, or instead a simpler thing we can do is a length of the second number, and we can just take the maximum of those two, right? So that's it. So this is one simple condition. So the length of remaining is less than the uh, whatever the maximum length is between first and second. And if that's the case, we return false. Now, another small thing we need to look for is in the case that we have, uh, so if we have the number 0, 1 or 0, 2, this is not valid as per the question, okay? But this is a very important thing. If you have the number 0 itself, that is fine. So for example, let's say I have 1, 0, 1. So in this case, the first number can be 1, the second number could be 0, and the third number could be 1. This is a valid sequence. But I cannot have something like 1, 0, 1. This is not valid, right? So this is going to be our second check, okay? So we're going to check if, so we look at the first number. So if the first 0, if that starts off with 0, so if that's equal to the number 0, then in that case, we're going to return false because that is not acceptable. But like I said, the number 0 itself can be fine. So over here, we're going to attach a AND condition, right? So we also have one more clause, which is the length of the first number should not equal to one. It should be greater than one, so not equal one, right? Because if the length is equal to one, the number is just zero, and just having the number zero is fine. Okay, cool. So now we're going to do the same thing for the second number, okay? So if this is there, or if even the second number, so instead of first, over here we're going to have second, second, and over here as well, right? So the second number starts with the digit zero, or if it, um, and if it doesn't have a length of one, then return false. Cool, so now what we're gonna do is, so we have the two basic checks, and now after this, we're gonna try to get our result. So first, as it is, is a string, so let's convert it to a integer. So first, uh, int first, and second is equal to int second. So now what we do, is we find our result, okay? So the result is just going to be the sum of first plus second, right? So first plus second. And let's just com uh, convert this to a string. It will be easier to do further calculations. So now let's also just keep track of the length of this result. So the length of the result is just gonna, since it's a, so right now we convert it to a string, it's just gonna be length, guys, that's it. Okay, so why is the length of the result important? So let's say the result has 10 digits, okay? But the remaining numbers, so in remaining, we only have five digits, right? In that case, that is not going to be a valid solution, right? Uh, the result is just way bigger. So this, in this case, we also return false. It is not a additive number, right? 
So let's just write that condition down. So if the length of the remaining numbers is less than the length of result, then in that case, again, we return false. Cool. Okay, so now we have a case where what could happen is the result, we need to see if it's in the remaining numbers. Now, even more specifically, we need to see, so it's remaining, and we need to see if it's in the beginning of the remaining numbers. So starting at index zero, and the length of it is gonna be up to length of rest, that's it. So let's say this is the case. Now, what does this mean? This means that the result is the starting of the remaining numbers. So over here, we have a condition, which is what if we reached the ending? In that case, that means that we have found a additive number. So that is going to be what we're checking for. So if the length of remaining is equal to the length of our result, what that means is that the result, whatever we currently got, is the last number. And we found a additive sequence. There's nothing after this. So in this case, we return true. That means that this first and second number that we've currently found has given us a additive sequence. That's it. But now if this is not the case, what that, what that means is we found the first number, we found the second number, and we also found the third number that is fine. But now we need to continue it on. And the way we do that is how I defined earlier. So now the first number becomes the second number. So we're just moving on to the next step, right? And the second number now becomes the result. And now what about the remaining numbers, right? So the remaining numbers are going to be everything. Uh, so the remaining numbers itself. But now we start at length of the res onwards. So what, do, what does this exactly mean? So essentially the, we have the remaining numbers and we've already accounted everything up to the length of result, right? So these numbers are already been accounted for. So we look at everything after that. That's all we're doing over here. Okay, so now we have this new combination and what we do is we just call the function on it, right? So we call the helper function. So currently the first number is not a integer. So string first, uh, same with the second number. And finally, we give it the remaining number. That's it. So now essentially we keep calling this function until we reach the ending. And at that case, we return true. But if let's say the, in the beginning we have a added sequence, but later on we don't, then at one of these conditions, we end up returning false. Now, finally, we have one last thing, which is if the result is not inside of remaining or more specifically, if it's not in the beginning of remaining, then in that case, we return false. So just for the sake of it, we do else return false, but realistically, you don't need this else statement over here. And that is our helper function over here. So this should essentially be it. Uh, now, this code could be shrunken down, in my opinion, but I feel like this shows all the steps a lot more clearer. So let's submit this and let's see. Oh, yes. Okay, sorry. So this is going to be double equal to, my bad. Sorry, one more mistake. This is going to be index 1 because we define it as index 1 is equal to 0 here. Okay, so there's one small mistake over here. Um, really sorry for the typos. So the 0 over here is going to be a string, right? Because the result is actually a string. So this is going to convert that to a string over here and same over here. Sorry about that. So both of these are going to be strings. Okay, and now this should get accepted over here. Cool. So as you can see, our submission was accepted. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. And do let me know if you have any questions.